So in this video, I thought I would talk about a character trait that I've seen among many strong learners, and it's one that I believe you can develop, and it's also one that is, uh, in many ways, a hallmark of being successful in other areas as well, and, and that trait is tenacity. Uh, and you can also think of it as grit. And, and actually, more recently, I've heard a researcher named Paul Stoltz, um, Paul Stoltz talk about a concept called adversity quotient. So it's um, something else you can, you can look up, and he's actually found as well that um, uh, people who have a high adversity quotient or maybe a high degree of tenacity or, or grit uh, tend to be very successful in many, many areas of life. And, and I think that uh, that would certainly apply to learning as well. So you can look up adversity quotient if you're interested. Okay, and, and if you've seen any of my earlier videos on effective learning and study skills, and, and you might have made the connection between uh, this concept and the one on mindset. So this is uh, very related in many ways to, to, to mindset, and I think uh, uh, if you haven't seen that video, I would definitely encourage you to, to look at that video as well, because they're concepts that do definitely go hand in hand. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, if you're somebody who can bounce back from an adverse situation, then you likely possess a growth-oriented mindset. Now, and since some degree of repetition is a good thing for learning, I, I thought I would still delve into this concept uh, uh, in the context of learning, in the context of learning success and academic success. And, and, and in general, I think many concepts uh, do take a while to really understand deeply. And if you have any difficulty or you're making mistakes, you should recognize that as part of the learning process. And you can overcome those mistakes with enough uh, time and practice, especially by leveraging some of the approaches I've talked about earlier, like active learning or, or using multiple uh, resources and so on and so forth. So I think that the, the key point here is that mistakes and learning go hand in hand and, and you can't uh, learn anything unless you're willing to make some mistakes along the way. Uh, because by definition when you're learning you're encountering new information and you're pushing out of your comfort zone and you know you can only do that if, if you're doing that properly you are going to be getting some things wrong. In fact if you're doing perfectly then you're probably not pushing yourself hard enough. Okay, so as I mentioned, being able to deal with adversity, it's a hallmark of people who have been successful in, in many endeavors. And for example, uh, many great chess players are able to find opportunities that others miss that might allow them to make a draw out of a position that people thought were lost or to find a win uh, in a position that their opponent might have thought was drawn. And I've even heard it said that this trait, this is the very trait that separates very good, even, even extremely good chess players from, from truly world-class chess players. Truly world-class players are able to find those hidden opportunities because they really, uh, you know, don't get, um, they, they don't, they, they have good tenacity, they have good grit when, when they're looking at positions. Now, now, one of the first places where I see many students give up easily, and, and, um, and I talked about this topic a bit earlier, but there's a lot more I think I can say about it, uh, is when they're faced with a bad exam score. So, you know, there's a lot you can, you can talk about when you're dealing with exam scores that are bad. Um, and, and let's put the word bad here, because obviously if it's a good exam score, you might not uh, be as, as interested in it, and you know, maybe you'll, but for bad exam scores, I tend to find there's a lot you can, you can do afterwards. And so there are a few things I would recommend. If you happen to have gotten a bad exam score, uh, one of the first things I would say is just you know, don't panic. Uh, surprisingly, that, that's uh, first reaction most people have is they panic and I realize this is easier said than done but if anything when you're faced with a poor test score you will need to reflect on how to deal with that and panicking won't help and even great students phenomenal students have done poorly on tests and it's something that you know, we don't see often but it actually does happen in a lot of people who are great students who have had bad test scores at some point or another now what really separates those really good students from other students is that ability to bounce back um, and I think that a key hallmark of that is not panicking if you do get a bad test score, but just kind of saying, here's what I'm going to do about it. Uh, the second thing is to put that score into perspective. And, and I think, um, you know, again, this is something people don't do enough of. But when you think about it, most uh, universities or, or in most high school classes, your exam score on a single exam will never dictate your final grade entirely. You know, for example, if an exam is worth, like, let's imagine you've got an exam and it's worth, I don't know, 20% of your grade, you can still fail the exam and get an A because let's say you, you got 50, you got a 50 out of 100 on the exam and, and let's say that, that that was considered failing, you know, that's going to mean you have, instead of 10 points out of, that you would have gotten for that exam, you're only going to get five points. And so you're going to get five points out of a possible 10, uh, given that exam is only worth 50% of your grade or 20% of your grade rather. Um, and, and so actually, let me, let me try to phrase this differently. I think I'm, I'm saying it in a bit of a, of a muddled fashion. 
Um, so imagine you got an exam and it's worth 20% of your grade. That means that in, in the ideal scenario, it would have contributed 20 points to your overall grade. And let's say you, did, you got half that exam right, and so you, know, you did miserably on it. And instead of those 20 points, you only got, you're going to get 10 points on your final grade that are going to be contributed to by that test. And so as a result, you still have 80% that's up for grabs. And if those 80% you do well on, let's say you get 80 out of 80 on these other things, and that combination of 80 plus the 10, that's going to be an overall score of about 90 points or 90% for the overall class. And so, and let's say 90% is good enough for an A. Um, you know, the, the point is to show that even a single bad exam score, uh, you, can, you can fail an exam at the onset and still potentially get an A in the class. Okay? Uh, and, you know, I actually, I remember having this exam as well. I, I, I had an exam and, and I was in college and I, I, remember, I did poorly for a combination of reasons. I was actually sick that week, barely slept the night before the exam because I was coughing and, and sneezing and wheezing and, you know, had a really crazy week otherwise with other assignments, etc. And I, I just did really badly on the exam. Um, but I ended up doing really well on the second and third exams and did really well on the final and the homework assignments, the programming projects, etc. And so as a result, I still got an A, actually an A plus in the course. And in fact, you know, I had a good friend of mine who, um, who was a master at this. He would always do really badly on the first exam in any class he took. Uh, and, and he inevitably, with ironies, he ended up getting a 3.8 GPA in, in computer science from, from a really top school. Um, and, you know, he, and this was 3.0 out of 4. Out of a 4.0, and he did this, I think, in part because he was really good at doing well on later exams and everything else. But he would always, inevitably, just bomb the first exam in every every class he took. So um, I'm not saying you should bomb the, the first exam, but it, I think it goes to show that you can still do well and have a good GPA, etc. If you even if you do poorly on a particular exam. Uh, the next thing I would suggest you do is just rethink your study strategy, rethink how you study. Um, and I think people often don't take a step back. If if you're doing the same thing. That you did last time, you're going to see the same results. And there's a, a, a phrase that that madness is is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. And, and I did a whole video on exam post mortem analysis. You should check that out because I, I really do go into this notion of rethinking your strategy. Uh, the fourth thing you can do is is talk to the professor, talk to the teacher as well. Um, and, and you'll find that uh, they may have good insight. They may be able to tell you um, how you should be studying for a test. If you show interest in the material. Some teachers might even be willing to drop a low score or weight things differently if they see an upward trend from a student. Uh, some may even be willing to extend you with an opportunity to do an extra credit assignment. And, and not everyone does this, but it's important to keep in mind that some teachers do allow for it uh, as a way to kind of bounce back off a bad grade. If you're genuinely interested in the material and, and you, you, know, had a, you, just, you just had a bad day and, and you know, your, your exam score is, is not maybe reflective of, of your overall ability uh, in that subject area. Uh, the next thing you should consider is is whether you want to keep the course. And you, you can in college, for example, you can often uh, you know you can drop the course. And, and I know this sounds like a uh, like you're failing or you're you know you're, you're doing something you're letting yourself down. And but it's it's something to to really consider. And and you know I, I you know I, I think that it, it's all dependent on the circumstances. There's really no shame in in doing that. In fact, um, sometimes maybe you're in a situation where you have a really heavy course load already. And you just haven't been able to spend the time that you need uh, to devote to a particular class, or maybe you don't have the background that you need. Maybe you have to take other courses as prerequisites. Um, there's there's no shame in taking that course later. Um, I actually have done this as well. There was actually one particular math course I took in undergraduate, and I, I remember very vividly the problem sets were just incredibly challenging. And to be honest, even though I had met the prerequisites, you know, I still don't think I had the foundations needed to do well in the course without actually spending a lot of effort at it. And, and that course was also being taken by a number of graduate students. Actually, most of the students in the course were graduate students. They actually had a lighter course load, and they could devote the time needed to complete the problem sets. Uh, and you know, even though um, you know, I was able to complete the problem sets and able to do so in the amount of time that they took, I, I just didn't have that kind of time because I was taking like five other classes or six other classes, and it was just impossible for me to do that, um, take that course and, and have my work-study job, and, and extracurriculars and so on and so forth and and you know I was doing uh, I remember the second problem set I was like there's no way I can keep doing this for week after week without sacrificing my ability to devote an adequate amount of time to some of my other classes so I, I did actually drop the class um, and it was a decision I agonized over and in retrospect I probably shouldn't have but you know it was a topic I was very interested in and you know I didn't really want to drop the class but I ended up taking it again when it was offered it was actually offered again 
and they got an A the next time around. Um, and, and again, it was a situation where um, if I hadn't, you know, dropped the class, I, I, I probably would have ended up just struggling the whole way through it. And I found this in, in general when I've taught as well, that some students, you know, they, they're able to do well in the class, but they may not have the bandwidth. They may not have the resources and time to devote to it. And if you're doing bad early on, it's only going to get harder. And so you really have to kind of step up your game. And if you don't think you're going to be able to do that, then it's, it's not worth kind of pursuing it. And I'll actually, let me end with, with another anecdote um, in this video. Uh, so another place where I think we're, we're um, being able to handle adversity you know, is, is very critical is when you actually take a test. And, and I can best describe this by recalling uh, an incident from my life. And I was actually taking a differential equations test. And there were five problems on the test. I remember this very vividly. I breezed through the first problem. I started tackling problem two. And I found that there was uh, one of the equations had a, had a couple of terms in it that weren't canceling out as, as I thought I, they would have. And so the equation was kind of messy. And I was like, you know what? Let, let me come back to this problem later because it's going to take me a bit more time. Uh, and so I went to problem three. Uh, and a similar situation came up. Again, the equation got really messy. And certain terms didn't cancel out. And I couldn't figure out how to solve it. So uh, I started to get a bit nervous here now because I didn't get problem two right. And problem three was also not going that well for me. So I went over to problem four. I got through problem four, got through problem five, and both of those I did without much difficulty. Came back to problems two and three, and I tried a bunch of different tricks, and I, and I made some progress, but I really wasn't able to come up with the correct solution, a solution that I know would have given me a, a full score on those problems. And at this point, you know, I started seeing students, and they're, they're handing in their papers, and the clock is, is winding down, and, you know, it's ticking away, and I'm just you know trying everything. I'm, I'm you know giving my most valiant effort. At the end of the day, I, I could not complete problems two and three. And these problems accounted for 40% of the test. I mean, there were only five problems on the test. So I, I was not in a good mood at this point. And, and to make things worse, it was a Friday. The test was on a Friday. And I had an entire weekend to kind of ruminate over how miserably I had just done on this test. Uh, and then lo and behold, Monday morning, when the exams were being handed back, the teacher announced that he had made two mistakes when constructing the test. In fact, there were mistakes in problems two and three. And the way he had written up problem two is that it couldn't be solved at all. And he wrote up problem three in a way by accident. He, he actually replaced a sine with a cosine. And as a result, um, even though you could theoretically have solved problem three, it would have required a lot more time, a lot more effort, a lot more work than he could have reasonably expected a student to do within the constraints of a short test. And so he actually ended up giving full credit to students like me who had made the appropriate amount of progress, even if we were unable to come up with the actual answer. And I actually, I felt much better like instantaneously. Uh, but then I started to wonder, I was like, you know, who the heck were these students who handed their tests in early? I mean, they actually made me nervous because I thought they had completed the test and, and gotten everything right. But clearly, they wouldn't have been able to solve those problems. I mean, unless, you know, and, I, and I, you know, I don't know, know why they handed their problem sets in early or their exams in early, but it seems to me that if you are, or rather, unless you are 100% certain that you have a perfect score, handing in an exam early is just a huge mistake. And, and I found over the years, that more often than not, the people who hand in their exams early do really poorly on tests. And I, I, I've seen this over and over again, even though you might think it would be the opposite. And I think it's just because they've given up. And, and I've always believed that there are possibilities to get partial credit. And in fact, had I not really pushed myself on those problems, you know, I too might have given up. And But by getting the, the appropriate amount of partial credit, I, that actually is translated to full credit. And those few points do add up. Oftentimes, I'll see at the end of a semester that it's just a few points that might translate into an entire letter grade. And so being able to get a few points here and there of partial credit, and if you repeat that multiple times over the course of a year, that can translate into a full letter grade of, of overall improvement in how you do uh, in a course. And so you know, I want to kind of close on that note, um, but just something to keep in mind is that you really want to have a lot of tenacity and grit when you do approach your learning. This is related to mindset, so I would encourage you to look at that video if you haven't done so already. Thanks a lot, and I look forward to making some more study skills videos in the future.